Hello, this is Richard Willing. We'll continue my discussion of my book, Money, the Twelfth and Final Religion, and we will continue the notion of a periodic synapse in the global race memory. This is part three. Let us speculate that about every 2,000 years, thought changes to such an extent that all previous thought structures are erased. For example, what would be the impact if previous knowledge of religions suddenly went away? Suppose one day there was suddenly no memory of Jews, Christians, Muslims, or holy books like the Bible. This we can call a break with the past. The advent some 2,000 years ago of Christianity was no doubt such a break with the past. Such a break with the past today could, for example, obliterate all knowledge of such cultural references as interest rates, banks, stock exchanges, and mortgages. Currently, it is widely agreed that these are icons and are central to politics and economic well-being. We tend to find life regulated by banks and their control by central banking, such as the Fed or the Bank of England or the Bank of Canada, as normal everyday events. As we discussed in parts one and two, the Bible saga of the Exodus had a God choosing a people who would be guided by an elite called Levites. Also, during the same saga, there are 273 men who were chosen to be more than the Levite elite. Qualitatively speaking, the Levites were chosen by their God. The book is quite silent about the God that selected the 273 men to be more than Levites. It is current today to hear about a prophecy that speaks to an end time. Unlike the Bible saga, the Mayan prophecy speaks of a time for the end of the age of the Word of God. Also, it reports that tools will begin to rebel against their users. The prophecy does not identify the God or the Word coming to end during this period, beginning 21 December 2012. By gentle speculation connecting the Bible saga with Mayan prophecy, we can see the 273 men who were more than Levites as having their own God. The Bible makes a reference to a god Moloch from a temple Milcom built by Solomon. Given the linkage between the temple role in finance and the evolution of central banking during the past 2,000 years, and the role of the 273 men as the first experts of money and finance and banking, and their self-identified identity as the egregor, we can see a continuing history of money for these 2,000 years. Working from a thesis that says the 273 men were more than Levites, the thesis could say that they have a separate God and we could call that God Mulak of Temple Milcom. In my book, Money, the Twelfth and Final Religion, the God Mulak is described in terms of perpetual debt, money at interest, and stock market swindle finance. Some call this condition international stock exchange finance. This finance effectively rules the world from high places, bringing the power of darkness referred to in the book of Ephesians. The rulers of this power of darkness, of interest rates, stock markets, and mortgages, can be identified as the egregor, who have descended from that first 273 men who were more than Levites. The Grigor have a blood oath of survival that they have kept during the ages. The Grigor swear we must constantly be aware because if the people ever find out that they can vanquish us by action, they, the people, will take action. The people must never find out what we, the Grigor, have done, for if they do, we shall have no place to run for it will be easy to see who we are once the veil of finance has fallen. Our actions will have revealed who we are, and the people will hunt us down, and no person will give us shelter. This covenant among us is sealed by blood, our blood, we the ones who from heaven to earth came. This oath leaves us 
with the astonishing conclusion that monotheism is error. And in reality, there are at least dual spiritual rulers active on earth plane. Thank you for listening. I'm Richard Willing. Until the next episode, send me your comments and thoughts. <laughs>